So a few shout outs. I can see yeah, the attending list is becoming big. I can see Dino has been able to join us. I can see Eliaza. I can see Gift Aida. I can see Mani Chepchumba. I can see Jacqueline Okat, James Samayo, Jocelyn Kinyo. I can see Morina Demba. I can see, this, this name is that, S Nyabuga. I can see Yusa912937. I can see Wix. We're really, really happy that you have joined us today for this call. And we are appreciative of you joining us on this call. So at this juncture, I want to hand it over to Prof. Maybe you can start with an introduction. Share with us kindly who you are, what is it that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, from my background research, I know that you're a professor of statistics and mathematics. So I will also wish to understand also even as we'll be sharing your story, you know, I, I don't think it's a deviation really from maths to integrity, but then why, 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 why is that this a thousand voices for integrity? Why the passion? So just do a brief introduction beyond um, people knowing you as a professor, who is Thomas Achia? You can also share with us what are some of your fun facts, what are some of the things that you do for fun, and then you can kickstart the presentation. Over to you, Professor Thomas Achim. Oh, yes, you can start unmuting. I know, let's yes, press that red button, unmute so that we can listen to you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm unmuted now. I hope you can hear me. So I thank you, Brian, and um, I want to thank um, everyone uh, for, um, for joining in to this webinar. Um, Brian has asked me some, some very, very difficult questions. Um, when someone asks you to describe who you are, it, uh, it becomes um, quite difficult. It reminds me of a certain, um, a certain great teacher who asked his disciples, what do the people say I am? And then one of them told him that some of them claim you are Jeremiah, others claim that you are uh, Isaiah and so on. And then he asked, but who do you say I am? And uh, the question of who one is, is very difficult to respond to, yet it is important. So um, just briefly, I, uh, as you indicated, I, I serve as um, the lead for the Nairobi Advent Ensemble Foundation. And as you also rightly indicated, I also serve as a senior statistician for Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Nairobi. But I'm also, as you mentioned, a honorary associate professor of biostatistics at the School of Public Health, University of the Witwatersrand, a honorary associate professor, School of Mathematics, Statistics, and Computer Science at University of KwaZulu Natal. And I also serve as an adjunct professor of statistics as at um, uh, Strathmore University's Institute of Mathematical Sciences. So in terms of responding to your question, uh, as far as careers are concerned, um, that is what I do. I am a statistician, but I am a passionate uh, teacher of uh, mathematics and statistics, something that I have done now for close, um, for close to 25 years having taught for about 15 years at University of Nairobi, um, about three years at uh, KwaZulu-Natal, um, but I'm currently serving at a, as a statistician, so I design surveys, uh, I'm involved in analyzing disease um, epidemiological data from, from uh, the kind of pandemics like COVID that we have at the moment, HIV and other related diseases. So those are things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But who am I um, is an interesting question. I, I, am a, a, I think the, the biggest responsibility I have is being um, a husband and a father to, to three young men. One is 22, the other is 16, and the other is eight years of age. So those three individuals um, really, really shape um, the way I view life, the, things that drive me, my passions, uh, and the like. So, um, and then the other thing that really drives my life is my relationship with God, 
in how I understand him to be, how I understand what he has done for me. Um, and so that um, sort of constrains me to do the things that I do. It drives my work, my work ethic, the way I interact with people, uh, the things I do, the places I go. Um, so my relationship with my God drives the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then finally, the, the fact that I am a Kenyan. I'm passionate about this. I love my country. It, um, it has um, shaped my um, worldview. It has shaped the things I am passionate about and my career and life in general. So when you talk about who I am, I am um, I'm really um, uh, a servant of God, but a, a friend to man. So I don't know whether Brian have said a lot about myself. Uh, that's really sufficient about yourself. Maybe one question before you do your presentation is maybe what is your favorite food? And this is all the topic. It'll be good to know. <laughs> You ask my favorite, uh, you're breaking a little. Yes, your favorite food. My favorite food. I was about to say soya, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, I love rice. Uh, and um, I'm still on the way to certain conversions. I also love chicken and, uh, and some potatoes and... Um, uh, a bit of uh, chin saga on the side. So those are things that I love eating. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So once again, those who are continuing to join us, we are really glad that you're joining us on board. So at this juncture, I really wish to give you time for the next 20 or so minutes. Uh, kindly just share with us why, why, why did you decide to come up with a, a thousand voices for integrity? What was your drive? What is the story behind it? And there are many, many people have been asking me, how can I really be part of this movement? So I wanted to hand it over to you. So this, I don't know if it's going to be like a sermon, but then do it in a way that you will do it and uh, we will be here to listen in. So I won't interrupt you until the very end of your presentation. So over to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Brian. Um, I will probably, in order to answer that question, sort of, um, delve a little into my own story, uh, who I am. I've, I've spoken about it to some extent, but I want to delve and sort of, um, I, I will become a little more vulnerable to the audience and tell them about who I am as an individual. Um, I'll start by sort of speaking about, I'm the son of a, a, a brilliant engineer. So my father is one of these guys who had the privilege of being part of the Mboya airlift in the 60s to go and study in a foreign land. And so when he came back, uh, he came back with uh, certain perspectives of life and certain disciplines and um, views of, of life that shaped many of the things that he does and the things that I would then do. But then being the son of an engineer, one of the immediate challenges I had was living up to the expectations of my father. And so the first six or so years of, of my schooling, I had the misfortune of being, you know, like the guy who is bottom of the class, a serious underperformer. This individual who, if you uh, sort of competed for bottom of the class, there was no way you would defeat him. So for the first six or so years of my life, I suffered serious self-esteem issues, underperformance in academia, um, but excellence outside the classroom. Then my father lost his job at some point. And so we relocated from the city where we lived to the village. And when I went to the village for two terms of my life, I encountered someone I would describe as a mentor. And Many of the things I'm going to speak about today are about a mentor all the way. So I arrive in the village, bottom of the class all my life, and I meet this individual who transforms my performance because he showed belief in what I was able to do, and I am transformed 
to bottom of the class to top of the class within a single year to an extent that I am in grade six. I do mocks with grade sevens and I am top of the school in terms of the mocks in grade six, but I am top of the mocks in the school that year. And I'm talking about mentor all the way. So I meet a mentor who changes my worldview and the way I'm able to perform. He believes in me and he changes many of the things that I then do. Then I go to secondary school and when I'm in secondary school, I join a school, I move from the, city, from the, the, the village back to the city. And for the period of time that I'm back in the city, I, I lose it again. And so for my Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, I'm in a school where I am different from the rest of my classmates. So because of the fact that I'm different, I suffer um, serious torture in terms of, you know, esteem, uh, feeling um, as though I am valueless. But during this period, I then move to fifth form and sixth form. And during this pe period, I meet another mentor a mentor all the way. And this mentor I may mention, his name is called Matole. Matole was in university, but I was in fifth and sixth form. And he would come back from the university and he would speak to those of us who are in uh, our local church and our local congregations. And we had a glimpse of the eloquence, you know, the polish, the passion that this gentleman called Andrew had for many things, and he inspired some of us. I'm talking about mentor all the way. From the life of this mentor, the way he carried himself out, the things he did, his focus, his drive, the way he treated people, the way he related with those of us who at that point in time were underperforming, underperformers, changed many of the things that I did and motivated me and some of my friends uh, who are in, I was studying in a school called Shimolateo and for two years without teachers in that particular school, as a class, we refocused, studied and made it to the universities. And some of my, my classmates, Lawrence, were able to join the universities as engineers and they are currently renowned engineers in this country. Uh, Habil, who joined um, um, uh, what uh, Kenya Airways as a pilot, and some of these guys are renowned in their fields, going through A level without teachers, yet meeting a mentor, a mentor all the way, who then changed our habits, our focus, our passions, the way we related with each other, teamwork, drive. So a mentor who transformed some of the things that we did. Then um, I joined the university, um, finished my first degree, went on to do my master's and was employed by the University of Nairobi as a lecturer in the School of Mathematics. I used to teach in the Faculty of Engineering. And uh, one of the things I remember is our pay was so meager that it was difficult for me to make ends meet. I used to live in Kayole, and I used to teach in the Faculty of Engineering. And I would come from Kayole. I could not afford to, to be in a matatu where, or in a public vehicle where you sit. I would board a vehicle, wait for the cheaper one, where you would stand and pay 10 bob. So from the 10 shillings, I would come in the matatu and they would arrange you in a way that was quite demeaning and I would leave Kayole and I would come to the engineering faculty, the American wing in the engineering school and I would teach engineering statistics to fourth year engineering students and then in the evening board the 10 shillings matatu because I could not afford to sit at 20 shillings and even then it felt like you know, like all hope was lost. Often I could not afford the matatu. I would walk all the way. But during this period, I met another mentor. His name is John Odiambu, Professor John Odiambu, the current vice chancellor of the Strathmore University. 
and he took me on attachment. He believed in me. I'm speaking about mentor all the way. He believed in this young man. And despite the challenges we had, MIGA pay at the university. I worked for International Livestock Research Institute for a while because John Odiambo believed, saw the potential in me, a mentor all the way. And from there, I realized that in life, it is not your circumstance. It is encountering a mentor, seeking an intersection of skill and knowledge because through John Odiambo, I met a mentor who helped me understand the significance of um, skill and knowledge, where you find the intersection of those two things that then sort of puts you on a trajectory to the things that are your dream. And leaving University of Nairobi, um, I then moved to South Africa for a while, and I lived in Cape Town as a postdoctoral fellow, and then I moved to Peter Maritzburg near Durban, and I taught at University of KwaZulu-Natal for three years. And at University of KwaZulu-Natal, I met another mentor, mentor all the way. His name was Henry Mwambi. I arrived there, and often when we go seeking greener pastures, you arrive and you realize that the grass that you thought was green on the other side wasn't as green as you imagine. But meeting this mentor, for the three years I was there, I was able to grow intellectually. I built my networks because I realized that in life, you are only as good as your network. So for every young person, an identification of mentors and a network that is supportive is critical. So Henry Mwambi was a mentor all the way for me. I left KwaZulu-Natal. I joined University of the Witwaters Run. And at University of Witwaters Run, I met another mentor. His name was Tobias Chirwa, the current head of school in the School of Public Health at the University of Witwaters Run. And this man was a mentor. So some of the things I'm trying to say are, it is, it is not your circumstance. I remember being unable to pay bus fare because of the kind of salary I had but I met a mentor. I had a vision for myself, and that has helped me a lot. So when I came back home to Kenya, so I come back home to Kenya in 2014, because I realized one of the things that I discovered living in a foreign land was that East or West, home is best. East or West, home is best. Nobody segregates against me. I will not drive into a fuel station and I'm greeted in another language, I'm unable to respond. And the person speaking to me realizes I am a foreigner. Being living in a foreign land made me realize the importance of my country, the desire to come home and make a difference back at home. But when I arrived home, I encountered amazing things. I encountered electoral violence, grand corruption, nepotism at unprecedented levels where you find governors um, engaging their wives, their children, their family members uh, in grand corruption. I came back home and I encountered um, unemployment of unimaginable levels amongst the young people. I met underpaid professional, medical, academia, um, various lawyers unable to find a meaningful employment, hospitals lacking in supplies, mismanagement of our cities, looting of public coffers, grand style. You know, so I arrive home and I find voiceless Kenyans who have resigned to Mtadu, what will you do about it? Our man syndrome, it is our turn to eat Mezuba, lazima uwe mjanja. You know, you arrive back home, you find cowboy contractors, tenderpreneurs, right, left, and center. Churches that have become the propagators and drivers of corruption. You know, you arrive back home, hopeful, briefcase organizations, 
And so coming back home, I realized that it was important for us to seek a voice, to be able to speak out against the things that we see in our society. We cannot sit back and listen to Mkadu. There is something we can do. I came back home and I realized that Kenya loses a third of its budget to corruption every year, an equivalent to $6 billion um, dollars a year lost to corruption. I realized that those who are charged with the responsibility of fighting corruption, the ESCC, are short-staffed. They lack equipment to tackle the problem. Our judiciary is incapacitated. So we realize we are in a state of voicelessness. Mtadu, there is nothing we can do. So for me, coming home and realizing that, you know, like when you look at $6 billion lost to corruption per year, when you think about $6 billion, that is about $600 million. That kind of money can pay um, a single individual or about 100 or so individuals, a million shillings a month for 63 years, non-stop. And it can pay close to uh, 40,000 young Kenyans, 40,000 shillings a year for the rest of their lives. So that is the amount of looting that we do per year. 600 million shillings a year that is lost to corruption. And then we look back, our roads, our systems are not functional. So um, it, it pained some of us. And we, as a thousand voices for Kenya, we are basically saying that there is something we can do. Um, I read somewhere that in 1963, um, the GDP of Kenya was about 920 million US dollars. The GDP of Singapore was 917 million US dollars. The, the, our economy was performing better than the economy of Singapore. I also read that in 1990, when I was joining university, the economy of Singapore was about 40 billion USD. The economy of Kenya had dropped, was about 9 billion, less than a third, the economy of Singapore. In, um, I also realized that by, by the time our current government took over, the Kenyan economy was worth 55 billion US dollars. The economy of Singapore was more than five times that. It was worth about 300 billion. The population of Singapore is about 5 million. The Kenyan population is 40 billion, 40 million. So you look at some of these things and you look at our, our GDP per capita. For Kenya, it's about um, 12,000 Kenya shillings um, or about um, 1,000 US dollars. The, the GDP per capita of Singapore is about 55,000 US dollars. Um, and you look at us and you wonder, where did we go wrong? And so the idea of a thousand voices for Kenya is really an attempt to say that we can't go, like, go on like this anymore. There is something we can do. Um, I was reading a report the other day um, by Aga Khan University, and it said that 50% of Kenyan youths believe that it does not matter how you make your money as long as you don't go to jail. The report was saying that about 47% of our youth admire those who make money through hook or crook. It says about 73% um, are afraid to stand up for what is right for the fear of retribution. 40% believe that it is important to pay taxes. And so you look at the statistics and it paints a very uh, grim picture of our future. We are lacking political power, we lack financial muscle. Um, but this project, A Thousand Voices 
for Kenya is a voice against Mkadu. It is a voice that says we love our country. I'm not leaving Kenya to go anywhere. Again, I love my country. A thousand voices for Kenya is a passion for the future of our children and our children's children, leaving a legacy for our children. What kind of Kenya are we living for our children? Um, money and material um, legacy alone will never suffice. I have seen the children of billionaires in this country who are currently fighting over that legacy. They are unable to um, sustain the legacy. They have billions. Some of them, I know a couple who are broke. So a legacy of material and wealth is not sufficient to sustain your children and your children's children. What we need is a generation founded on values, a generation founded on, um, you know, love, discipline, hard work, you know, um, on principles. Some of these values that change not. I always tell people that there are things you can take from me. I can lose my job. I can lose the car I drive. But there are things, values, you know, uh, standing up for right though the heavens fall. You know, being that kind of individual who will pursue right whether everybody else is going left. That kind of a person will be able to grow an income and live um, a legacy for tomorrow. So our project, our initiative, just to briefly speak about it as I wind up, um, is founded on something somebody said. He said, the only thing necessary for evil men to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And then somebody, Martin Luther King then says, when evil men plot, good men must plan. When evil men burn and bomb, good men must build and bind. When evil men shout and ugly words of hatred, good men must commit themselves to the glory of love. So I am challenging and inviting us to realize that we can be the voice against Ntadu. There is something we can do. And this project, the thousand voices for Kenya, Uadilifu Ninguvu, invites Kenyans, young and old, to unite in a fight against the corruption vice, to provide a platform where we can voice our displeasure and decide that we're going to live lives of integrity. So this platform offers us a platform where we can uh, uh, voice these things. We are seeking young people aged 13 to 24 to become voices against Mkadu, voices for integrity, because integrity is strength. And we are working towards developing, um, um, using music, spoken word, poetry, as voices um, for integrity. I am sure you can remember those of us who are around in 2007, the song um, um, Daima Mimim Kenya aroused that nationalism in us, a desire to stand up for Kenya. And we believe that young people have talent. Young people have the ability to rise up and speak for right to stand up for what is right, because it pays in the long run to stand up for right. So within this project, we are seeking to team up with a cohort of integrity champions. And if you are out there, aged 18 to 24, we would like you to come and work with us to become a voice for integrity. If you are a parent, you have a young child aged 13 to 24, he can come on board. He could be a poet just to speak on these issues. You could be a singer, songwriter. We invite you to add to this voice. 
we are building what are called integrity clubs. We are hoping to team up with churches, with schools, with youth organizations, in forming clubs. We have developed a curriculum and we will invite you to walk through this with us on this curriculum. And one thing that we are hoping to do is that these clubs and these champions will start disseminating messages um, of integrity on various platforms and speaking for right. The other thing we hope to do is to form an integrity tribe. Many of us, I observed, as we approached the electioneering period, we ran to our tribes because our, some of us were saying we are now resonating with um, um, the, the man of our tribe, but we want to form an integrity tribe. And we are praying that you will be willing to walk with us. Brian will tell you how we are going to do this, but join us, invite others to join us. We can be the voice. We can be the change that we hope to see in our society. We cannot wait for it to come from our politicians. We have waited long enough. Yet every time you will notice when they go to parliament, they will enact laws that improve their retirement benefits. They will enact laws that will give them perks, new cars, house, housing allowances, things that will build them at the expense of the rest of us. But we can become the voices without antagonizing them, yet speaking about the Kenya we desire to see. So I invite you today, join hands with us as an integrity champion. Join hands with us to form integrity clubs within um, places that you have influence. Join hands with us on our webinars, on our, on our various social media platforms to disseminate the content that we are developing. Um, I want to pen off by saying that the greatest wealth and strength of any nation is its youth. The future of a nation lies uh, in the hands of posterity. The quality of youth we develop today determines the kind of future this nation will have. And I'm saying, if we want to ensure a bright future for our country, we need to empower the young people. The youth of any nation and society are its potential energy. And so if you are someone of my generation, Please adopt one of our integrity champions. If you are a young person, we invite you to walk with us. Join us in being a spokesperson for the kind of Kenya that we want. Um, I've spoken long, but I hope that you have listened to us and that you will um, join hands with us, collaborate with us in A Thousand Voices for Kenya. Wadilifu Ninguvu. Thank you so much. I want to hand over to Brian. Over from me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for that inspiring story. Every time I get to listen to you speak, it's, it's a rejuvenating moment. It's one of the stories that I can never get uh, tired to listen to. I really appreciate and I hope those of us who have been following us online, virtually, maybe through the Zoom link or through the Facebook link that you have been inspired by this story and that you're going to subscribe to join the integrity tribe i know even as we speak of this this might seem like something that is impossible but something that i learned recently uh maybe a, about a year ago i learned of an idea called moonshot thinking moonshot thinking really um the best way i can describe it is by using the example of the twin brothers who discovered the aeroplane they lived in a time when, if you're to talk about coming with an aeroplane, really looked like an idea that was impossible. But yet today, you know, if you're Luo, it just takes you 45 minutes and you're Kisumu, enjoying the benefits of these twin brothers. And so even today, as we try to come up with an idea, you know, this is a fight that many people have started. Some have already given up, but today we have an opportunity. An opportunity is presented to us to start something that will outlive us. 
generations to come, we will be able to testify that indeed corruption is something of the past. 50, 60 years down the line before independence, there was no huge corruption like this. It's my prayer that in the coming 50, 60 years, even as we look back then, we'll be able to attest and say that indeed this thing that has been eating our morals, eating our everything, has become a thing of the past. We all have a role to play. There's something for each and everyone to do. Just as Prophet said, you can, adopt, you can adopt an integrity champion, you can become an integrity champion, and beyond everything, you can be the voice that we need. Our desire is this group can grow not only to become a thousand voices for Kenya. Very soon, we hope maybe next year time like this, it will be 10,000 voices for Kenya, 100,000 voices for Kenya. And this will be even up to 48 million voices for Kenya that will be able to stand and represent a world where we say we are people of integrity. Just to challenge us even as we come to the very close of this seminar, you know, they say integrity, or if someone is integrity, integrity is something that you are when you are sure no one is going to find out. You know, the person that you are when you are sure no one is going to realize whatever thing that you are doing, that's when our characters and integrity are tested. I pray even as we aspire to voice our integrity, even as we aspire to share what is it that we want to do together, let's be individually voices of integrity for our own self because only when I do it, then can this become a we thing. But if I do not become a person of integrity, we can never become people of integrity. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, so moving forward, I'd like to advise that kindly follow us on our Facebook page, follow us on our Nairobi Advent Ensemble Foundation. Kindly go look at our website. From tomorrow, moving forward, we're going to be sharing sign-up links so that you can become part of this tribe. We will be asking you to share your age and some of the areas that you're willing to participate and join with us. There is so much more that you're willing to share. So uh, we'll be holding one, uh, every month we'll be holding an info session just to share this message. Um, share this message. Sorry, man. Speaking with Lewis, you can learn this S and H thing. So, um, so moving forward, you're going to be holding numerous info sessions so that we can be able to share. So other things that not every Tuesday, we normally have a webinar series talking about addressing uh, different issues. Kindly make sure you subscribe for the same Every Thursday, also, uh, every Tuesday, once, uh, once two, two Tuesdays in a month, we'll be having integrity sessions where we are trying to invite people to speak about, you know, uh, things about social integrity. How do, you, how do you avoid, if you are a youth, for example, how do you avoid polygamous relationships? You know, we only talk about polygamous marriages, but we forgot that sometimes you can have even three, four, five girlfriends. That is a polygamous relationship. How can we avoid such things? Talking about financial integrity. How do you deal with your savings? How do you save that little that you earn to avoid corruption? Living without a budget, how do we learn these tips? Talking about, you know, things like work ethics, time integrity. So make sure you subscribe to our webinars so that together we can be able to learn. Very soon we'll also be launching our TV series. We will be speaking widely on this subject so that we can be able to learn. And even moving forward to the churches that we will identify, kindly make sure you tune into those programs. It is a very intensive curriculum that will help us develop characters, that will help us to be people of integrity. So make sure you tune on for the same. So thank you so much, Prof, for joining us. I want to read a few comments from those who have been able to chat on our chat box. A shout out to James Amaya. James Amaya says, actually, this day has been coincidental to my feelings. Watching a documentary about Indian soldiers shedding blood for their country while the policemen are busy perpetrating corruption. From Indian moods, I realize our country is worse. I get the urge to fight corruption. And on me joining this meeting, the urge multiplies inside me. Someone must stand for the right. The question is, it's who? I think it's us who have known the truth. Professor, you have talked about mentors, and just as I've been talking, you, talking to you, have become my mentor. Thanks. Uh, Nairobi. Okay, sour, sour. So thank you so much, but, James. But I can see there is, there's a hand from Grace somewhere. Okay, maybe Grace, you can say one other thing before we close this session for today. Grace, maybe you can chat in the chat box area. Even as we wait for the uh, for Grace, let's make sure you chat in the chat box area. We'll be able to share with you. I want to say a special thank you to those who have been able to join us live from Facebook. 
I've seen the likes. I've seen people like uh, Benjamin Rundu joining with us. Thank you so much for that. Maybe Grace Waringa, you can share one or two things and then we shall bring this to the close. Grace, over to you. Grace, you're muted. Yeah, it looks like Grace is muted. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so another thing that maybe I, I forgot to highlight, we'll also be sharing resources in terms of how can we build. So we'll be trying to come up with posters. And Okay, Grace, I think you're on. Maybe you can speak a word or two. Yes, Grace? Um, Guy, Nira, a cold decati, haha, Uka, Davia. Who text? Quadica. That is a guadica. Yeah, as even as we are trying to form an integrity tribe, that is an interesting tribe there. Thank you so much, Chris. Most of our viewers maybe perhaps could not understand, but then you think. So. You go yet? Hello? Hello? Just to say hi. Okay. Thank you so On much. On behalf Chris. of my daughter, Sheila. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sheila. I know Sheila is one of our integrity champions, and yes. we look forward to working with her on this journey. And maybe Thank you. just to mention this. Um, as, as, as Brian sort of uh, winds up, we would like to invite you um, yes. to support us, uh, all our listeners, in walking this journey. Um, okay. Like as mentioned, Sheila, you can adopt Sheila and yes. walk with Sheila to ensure yes. that Sheila can yes. grow, become yes. um, a real... Uh, how old is she? She's nine, I think, isn't it? Yes, she's nine. She is nine. So we'd like to invite someone to say, I'm going to work with, with Sheila, help her develop the, the content she's developing and grow to be an integrity champion today and even in the future. So that is something that we look forward to doing together. I can see James Amayo's hand is also up. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm James Amai, just as my name is indicated there. I just want to thank you very much for the presentation. Actually, as I, I, as I have written there, this day has been so coincidental. Actually, I've been having these feelings all along, but then most of the youths in this country, they are willing to fight corruption, but there is, there is no one to stand for them. So, Professor, if you can actually stand for us and be a leader, then we can actually follow. I want to thank you very much. Thank you very much, James. I, uh, as I hand over to Brian, what I can challenge all of us is we, we may not do great things as individuals, but we can start by doing small things greatly. Um, uh, four years ago, I was invited to teach at University of Zambia. Um, and when I went to teach at the University of Zambia, the thing that caught my eye in Zambia was the fact that I, we drove and got to the roundabout and the people of Zambia would give you way. And for me, that was very, very surprising. Uh, you will get to our roundabouts and we are aggressive. We are always fighting for space. Um, from our driving alone, the aggressiveness is world class. Uh, people come from elsewhere and they cannot believe it. We, um, I saw it in our schools. You go to the dining hall to serve. Our children have adopted this. They don't keep the line. But I think it is important and significant for all of us to be able to do what's right. Though the heavens fall, you choose that I will do right. And that's our challenge to all of us. We will team up but we can together be the change that we seek in our country. Over from me and over to you, Brian.
Yeah, so there's a question from one of us who is saying, if I'm above the age of 24, can I still walk with us through this journey? And I say, yes, everyone is invited to be part of this tribe. There's always something that we can all do together. And just as Prof. Has said, you know, even the biggest things are made by the small squares of life. The small squares. So the small squares of life, as we do them greatly, then we'll be able to achieve. So we'll be sharing posters. Can you make sure you follow us on our Facebook page? You're going to share an infographic just describing a summary of what Prof. Has said what is it that you do and how can you join part of our movement? Very soon we'll be launching even WhatsApp groups. I know WhatsApp groups. So we'll be launching WhatsApp groups for now and then we'll be communicating much more of what it is that we tend to do together. Otherwise, I want to say thank you so much for all who have been able to join us. This really has been a blessing and I really appreciate the calls and even I can see the fire that is starting to develop in us even as we aspire to be part of the 1,000 Voices for Kenya. The room is big enough. Let's not be limited by the number a thousand. If we exceed a thousand, we become ten thousand, then a hundred thousand, then a million, then the whole of Kenya, eventually Africa and the rest of the world. Change begins with you. Change begins with me. I want to say, even as we come to the close of this disco, the question that I want you to go home asking yourself is, what is it that I can do in matters integrity? Integrity starts with a simple thing as much as when you're done drinking a bottled water. Where do you throw that bottle? Or when you have eaten a ma I have eaten maize, where do you throw the maize cup? That is integrity. Before we are able to fight big battles like Kemsa scandals, like stuff like that, we start with the small aspects of integrity. Those are the things that will eventually help us overcome the fight against corruption and the fight against disintegrity. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining in. We are really, really appreciative for having you on board. And we have come to the end of this webinar, uh, webinar for today. Tune in, we'll be sharing much more in the coming sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Prof, for sharing your amazing story. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you so much. And allow me at this juncture to invite Heleki. Heleki wants to share something with us. And then after that, we shall conclude officially. Heleki, over to you. Mwananchi mzalendo Kwa uchungu na mateso Kwa vilio na huzuni Tulinyakuli wa uhuru Na mashuja wa zamani
stupendo Kutoka ziwa mpata kwani Kaskazini na kufini Thank you so much for tuning in once again. We have come to the very end. You are all free to leave. Good night, people. God bless you.